Hi there and uh, welcome to uh, the second session of uh, season two of, uh, of the Norton live streams. Um, before we start uh, on a personal note, I'd just uh, like to uh, recognize this very sad time at the passing of our Queen uh, to pay tribute to her long and dedicated uh, service to our country and to send our condolences to her family at this very, uh, very difficult uh, time. So thank you for that. Okay, so um, so now we're going to continue with the uh, with our live stream today. Uh, so the agenda today is uh, is uh, wire brushes. So we're going to be looking at everything to do with uh, wire brushes. There's obviously a large range of these products. Uh, it's the aim of today's uh, half hour you're going to spend with me here is to look at which brush should be used for for what uh, what application. Um, there is uh, normally some closed captions on this stream that we uh, we like to give you guys the option to to translate my English into your local language. But unfortunately, with a little error on Teams this afternoon, that is actually not uh, not working. So our apologies for that. So this stream will be uh, purely in English uh, only with no translatable subtitles as we normally have. So again, uh, apologies uh, for that. OK, so well, here's, uh, here's today's agenda for, for the wire brushes. So it says here how to choose the best brush for the job. Like I say, there's a large range of wire brushes, so it is really looking at how to get the best uh, from your brush as to what application you've got. Uh, the agenda here is, uh, first of all, we'll talk about who your experts are today. So there's myself and a colleague of mine, which I'll introduce to you in a moment. Then we're going to look at uh, where the brush is used and what kind of materials and applications. Uh, why use which brush for something particular. Uh, we're going to introduce you to our new generation of wire brushes that we're uh, showcasing today because we've done a lot of changes over the past uh, couple of years to our new range we have to show you today, which we're extremely proud of. Uh, we're going to look at our new promo kit, which is a really nice kit of a series of brushes to do lots of different common jobs we see out there in the market. And then at the end of the live stream, we're going to have our live question and answer session. So during the stream, if you've got any questions you want to ask me or the, my guest who's going to be on here with me today, please jot it down on the chat section on the right hand side of your screen. And we'll get to that at the end of this stream. Something a little bit new for this series of streams we're doing towards the end of this year is that you're able to claim your own free sample, which is something uh, something very nice that we can give you the option of. So stick around till the end of the stream. And uh, uh, as long as you're watching live, you'll be able to log on and claim your own free sample of a product that we're showing you today on this stream. So really nice offer from his, us here at Norton. So please take it up and uh, and get that done. All right, so on the agenda there, the first thing was for us to introduce uh, experts, so uh, we better get on with that. Okay, uh, I'm Paul Gray. I live in Cheshire in the centre of England. I'm an application engineer at Sangoban uh, in the MRO department, and I cover the whole of EMEA, so a large area. Uh, 30 years in manufacturing in total, and uh, 18 years, I think coming up 19 years in abrasives now, so we might have to update this slide at some point, I think. <laughs> So yeah, long time in abrasives, but uh, yeah, love my job. It's a, it's a great job. Um, next person on here, I hope he's online, is my friend Francisco Cuero. How are you doing? Yeah, hello. Hi, Paul. I'm here. Yeah. Good. I'm glad to hear your voice. How are you doing, my friend? Okay? Fine, fine. Good. Well, yes, I say I live in Spain. I have been working for, well, I'm working for Sangoban for more than 25 years, uh, working with product, with sales. Then I have a quite wide experience about product. Uh, I have been working in the engineering market, uh, distribution market. Then uh, I trust I can support you to sell more and more white brushes and other system component product. That's fine. That's thank you very much for that, Paco. You say more than twenty-five years. It could be thirty. Is that right, or are you just trying to not tell me your age? Not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I don't blame you. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for that, Sir Paco. So Paco is a product manager for for the products we're going to show, show today, and I'm the application engineer. So we'll be discussing between uh, both of us as we go through and show you the different applications uh, about what attributes each each of the products have got, but. Uh, First of all, I just want to go through a little uh, PowerPoint presentation for you for all the other topics on the agenda we had about uh, what wire brushes uh, are. So, uh, Paco, do you want to take us through this? And I can I can add in if 
No, okay, thank you. Yeah, well, uh, you can see white roses can be used almost in in all market that we are we are already selling the uh, abrasive. Uh, it can be working in foundries, in automotive, in in welding, in painting, in all in all markets, and it can work almost in all in all material: aluminium, steel, carbide, wood, glass. In all kind of material, then it's a product that you can you will find in all our MRO distributor in all markets, and it is a solution for almost all material. Uh, it's, it is for for paint removal, debarring, honing, even polishing. It's not to remove material, but it's, it's to remove any any coating on the material. Then to clean and and, and prepare a surface preparation uh, tool. Yeah, I think it's safe to say Paco is, uh, and if you hear me refer, refer to Paco, by the way, that's uh, Francisco's nickname. It's it's easier for me to say Paco than Francisco. Uh, I think, it, as you said, the really important point there, if anybody's using abrasives, they're generally using wire brushes in their in their factory as well. So it's uh, they go hand in hand together. So it's a, it's a bit of an add-on for us, isn't it, really? It's a, yeah, so very, very versatile products. So, yeah, Paco, so about the machines, yeah. About machine, well, uh... There are many, many kind of machines where you can use the white brushes, even by hand. And even we we have in our range very nice product uh, with good uh, hands, uh, uh, or or with the ergonomic uh, handle in plastic that you you can use with, with, by hand very easily. You don't need to make pressure with the, with the with white brushes. It should work very very soft, as light as light as as possible. And also, of course, we can work with the right under grinder is the, uh, the most the most popular machine for for abrasive. Then in the same machine that you will use uh, abrasive, we, we can use a uh, white brushes, but not only in those machines, in basic grinder, pedestal grinder, mini grinder, even in in uh, in robot. We are we are selling a, a white brushes uh, through the general market uh, in in robot to to clean pipes or to clean uh, other 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 material and, and shapes. Yeah, that makes sense as well, Paco. Because unlike abrasives, when you use a wire brush, it doesn't really change shape as as it's in use. So it's really ideal for. With manual as well as robotic applications but uh but i think uh, here why use a wire brush uh why not use an abrasive it's a real crossover sometimes but uh the main attributes of the reasons for using a wire brush are in here and, and the first one for me it doesn't load you know if especially on sticky materials like aluminium where we'll they will load to an abrasive quite quickly or get stuck to an abrasive it doesn't happen with wire brushes they keep nice and open and free uh, uh free cutting also, the fact that you, you alluded to earlier, Paco, as well, is they don't actually change the shape of the material you're, you're trying to clean. It, uh, so if you've got a weld, for example, that you just want to take off the burn, uh, wire brush is absolutely perfect for that. So they don't remove any material. It just takes off the unsightly carbon deposits uh, around, around yeah, the weld. You're right, you're right, Paul. And, and, also, and also, of course, uh, in wave brushes, we have many, many different shapes. Uh, in abrasive or movement, we have few shapes available. But in in white brushes we can, we can have, I will say <laughs> even <laughs> almost any any shape. Then for for uh, areas uh, that are hard to reach, we yeah. we will find probably the the right uh, white brushes to to clean this area. And of course, as, as Paul say, this uh, is a product that it, you will know clothing or no loading the the material because it works just with the with the tips of the of the wire. We, you you should not make any pressure. For instance, within in angle, uh, right angle grinder, just with the weight of the of the machine. Is yeah, let the product do the work, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Then it's very very gentle to work. Okay, thanks for that, Paco. So tell me what's new. What what have you done with the range over the past couple of years? Yeah, well, uh, we had. Uh, <laughs> Uh, make a, I think with with also with the R and D team in the state, we have made a, a quite huge comparison with the product we had before and the product we have today. Then we have changed, I will say, eighty percent of the range to uh, to a, a new product with uh, with uh, Norton brand everywhere. Of of course in the box, but also also in the in the in the product itself, you have the the Norton brand there. You have the maximum RPM. You have the application in the in the product, and also the quality is improved. We have made many 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 tests uh, with R and D, and all the tested this product improved what we have before. Sounds good, Paco. It's a clear improvement 
price the cost is almost the same today with with the with the continuous price increase we have not uh, had a lot of price increasing in way brushes we don't talk about costs on on live streams Paco. it's all about the product <laughs> i'm only kidding with you sorry sorry but, yeah. yeah then uh, it's a very good product and uh, okay and then uh, it's a very 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 really really good improvement with the product that we have before okay and uh, you've put this nice kit together here as well right yeah, yeah, the, we have we have uh, we have built a kit in in way brushes in MRO. Okay, there are many applications that we say we have a application for steel, for stainless steel, for wood, uh, um, for for plastic, for many other. But seventy percent of the application is for for steel. Then uh, we have carbon we have steel, yeah, carbon yeah. steel, yeah, carbon steel, all kind of of, uh, of steel that are are uh, has a ferric ferric uh, inside, not a stainless steel. Stainless steel is more or less 20 25 percent of the market, and the rest they are all the other materials. Then uh, we have a build uh, a kit with uh, with product, a specific product for rake angle grinder, that is the the most popular machine on the market, and for for steel. Then you can test the uh, uh, crimped wire brushes uh, with uh, with different with different shapes. Uh, well, you can yeah, you can test. You can you can pretty much do everything with an angle grinder here that you you can with the with the kit you have. And one thing I like about this kit, uh, Paco, that you've you done, you've including these um, high quality uh, leather welding sleeves. And you may wonder why would you want to have a welding sleeve in a, in a wire brush kit? Well, if you've ever used wire brushes, you'll understand why you do get small fragments of wire brush breaking off when you use these products. That's natural. The product's supposed to erode, uh, and these bits of particles of wire can get stuck everywhere so the more ppe you have uh, the better and the, the forearms are are, are are a place where these little bits of uh, wire can stick into so uh, so it's uh, it's really nice to have these uh, ha have these in the kit uh, so talking about the kit i can show you that here it's really nice for the work uh, paco has done to put this together so here are the nice uh, welding sleeves that we have all nice of our uh, fabulous uh, norton logo on there as well so really high quality they have a nice and thick slide straight over your forearm with no problems at all i will be putting them on in a moment when i get my pp on because they're really uh, really useful bit of kit uh, and then we have a little leaflet inside here uh, telling you about the full range and types of wire brushes we've got on there. Uh, details of all the part numbers on the back if you if you if you want to know and, uh, and order some of those and then inside we have uh, we have the wire brushes before i handle them i'm going to get my pp on because uh, as soon as i touch a wire brush i end up uh, pricking my finger i don't really want to be doing that today uh, so i'll get these sleeves on i'll get my gloves on and then we'll start to look at each of uh, each of the brushes in there so yeah so safety and comfort with the products is absolutely uh, absolutely paramount so uh, that's a big improvement uh, in the range that we've had so far so they've never been better than they are they are right now i think they're designed for somebody a bit smaller than me these uh, these gauntlets <laughs> okay so i get that I get my gloves on as well and you can see i've got a, a leather apron on too you don't necessarily need to have a leather apron you can do with your overalls but it's just stopping any any random wires that come off uh, when we're using these products on an angle grinder uh, to go into my overalls and perhaps into my skin so it's just just comfortable remember angle grind is running at eleven thousand rpm that's a pretty quick uh, speed of the product so it can fly quite far when you're using these things right so we've got five different products in this kit first of all is our crimped uh, wire wheel brush okay so this is a product that we're going to be using mainly on the oh sorry i'm just going to get in the camera here mainly on the periphery of the wheel here okay so we're not really using it on the edge because it's not going to cause any aggressive uh, action we really want to be using that on on the periphery so i'll show you where we're going to be using that in a moment so we'll put that on the component there the next one is is a what we call a crimped wire bevel brush okay same principle as the crimped wire wheel that we have there but this is what we call a bevel brush so we actually use that on the side so instead of using it there we use it in this access to go into corners etc and get into some access on on different components so that's the crimp wheel and a crimp wire bevel brush next under here we have uh, what we call uh, a um, a cupped wire brush here so two different types here we have a standard cup brush here uh, which is great for flat surfaces and larger larger areas but then we have another one but with a a nice little uh, safety feature on there we've got these little 
plastic sort of flaps that sit around uh, the, the, the brush. And when in use, these lift up and they protect uh, the operator from, uh, from any flying, uh, flying debris. Uh, so they're quite, uh, they're quite nice to have on there. And then finally, we have the most aggressive brush that we have, which is a twist knot. You can see the difference in, uh, this is a bevel brush again. You can see the difference in the crimp wire. Okay, so it's quite thin, uh, uh, thin wire as compared to the, uh, the twist knot. This is the most aggressive uh, of all the brushes that we have uh, in our range. It's a bit of a monster. So we'll show you where we're gonna be using, uh, using that brush. Uh, so, I think we start uh, off with the wheel, the crimp wire wheel that we were looking at in the first instance. Let's get everything out of the way. Uh, so first to ensure we've got all our PPE on, I've got my overalls uh, over my boots. So I've got to get any wire particles that are gonna fall into my shoes because that can be quite uncomfortable. I have the hearing protection in, uh, leather apron, leather uh, forearm sleeves as well. Now, I'm not gonna use safety glasses today. And instead, I'm gonna actually use a full face uh, mask just to protect, uh, again, anything around uh, my face and, and eyes. There's no chance of any product uh, hitting me in there. So perfectly safe to use these products. Okay, we'll be using a standard angle grinder today. So this is a, a nice, powerful machine. It's about 1.7 uh, kilowatts this machine is so it's a pretty uh, pretty pokey machine now we don't actually need to have the flanges on the machine today because we're not going to lock these because all of these wire brushes for the grinder actually come with an m14 thread included on them straight away so they're almost like quick change products so you know no mounting no use of the flange we just put that straight on to the angle grinder and we spin it on and lock it off okay so that's now I've locked that and you can see why I need my gloves on. If I did that with my bare hands, there'd be a rather bit of a mess on the table. <laughs> we don't want to be cleaning up after myself. I certainly don't do today. It's Friday. Uh, so that's how we have it. So when we're using a brush, we're going to be use it in, uh, in this kind of angle like this, because we want to be using the periphery here. So when you've got your grinder, you need to adjust your guard uh, so it suits. Okay, so have your guard like that and it's in the right orientation not to get in the way or snag on any other other parts we're going to be to be grinding today all right so what i'm going to use this for as we said it's for cleaning um around surfaces that a little bit difficult to to reach so something like this plate with some welds down it i don't want to take the weld off you can see that's actually happened here somebody's used a fiber disc or a flap disc to remove the weld yeah, and some people want to remove the, re remove the weld, but if it's a structural weld and you need to leave it intact, but clean it up, wire brushes are absolutely perfect for, for doing this. So you can see the, it's pretty unsightly, lots of uh, weld burn on there, which doesn't look particularly great. So what we're going to show you is how the little fingers of, uh, of this wire brush are able to get around all the shapes and the contours and the grooves that are on the welded surface here and give it a nice clean uh, surface uh, surface aspect right anything to add paco we get on straight away you are very very clear very clear paul yes uh, people will see the uh, wire brushes is, is not dangerous to work with it of course ppes are required always yes uh, but uh, but uh, you, you don't need pressure to work you you will see how easy it is to work with the wire brushes it's a good point. If you push too hard, you're going to break more wire. Uh, so really do let the product do the work. And also, if you push too hard, you're bending the wires. Uh, it's, so you're stopping it working. So you feel like you have to push harder. If you just use the weight of the machine and use the end of the wires, because you're not pushing it, it will do a much better, uh, much quicker, quicker job. Yeah. Paul, if you press too much, you, you blend the, the wire and the tips will not, will not make the work. Then uh, no pressure. Yeah. Okay, right, I'm going to get some work, some work done now. See how fast it works, no pressure, very, 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 uh, very low the, the kind of, of spark. Spark means that we, we remove material and you, have, you see no spark, then you, we are removing just the coating the part that is sticking on the material, not the base material. 
I think you can see if we take a, a close up on, on the side camera there, you can see the way I've cleaned and where I haven't cleaned. I don't even need to point it out to you, it's pretty obvious. So you can see really quickly the wire brush has taken off all that burn, it's taken off the spatter, made the world nice and clean, taken off all the carbon. So it, uh, it's, you know, if that's going to go for, for paint or whatever else to protect the, the carbon steel, it's uh, good enough to, so the paint will stick there and no contaminants. So uh, really quick and really, yeah, really easy to do. Okay, so now we'll move on to the uh, the same principle. It's the same wire, but it's in the bevel position. So instead of using this like that on the grinder uh, in that position, we're gonna use it to get into something like this. So a corner. Be very difficult to get any of the other like uh, cut brushes into there. They just won't really reach, but the bevel brush, due to the way it's uh, designed, easily e able to uh, to get into this uh, this difficult to access corner. Right, so I'm going to get this uh, little bit of angle uh, mounted in the vise and I'll get the bevel brush on. This is one of the benefits. We have almost uh, one uh, one way rushes for each shape to, to, <laughs> to clean. Yeah. There's, there's a huge range. It must have been uh, it must have been a nightmare when you're choosing which uh, which uh, which ones to put in your kit pack, all right? You know, engineers like to make uh, uh, difficult uh, difficult shapes. Then we need <laughs> white rushes to clean them. Yeah, well, this is the fact. In in a fabrication market, there's there's, there's lots of difficult applications, difficult access uh, areas. That's why we have so many different abrasives that are available, and therefore wire brushes that are available to be able to get into these. Uh, difficult to access areas, right? Yeah, carbon steel structure, you, you can find many, many different places to, to clean, to remove before pain or, after, or to remove rust or whatever, then yeah. you need a different shape. Yeah. Okay, so same principle applies here. It's a weld, we don't want to remove any material. We just want to take away this blue, take away the burn uh, from this and make the weld look nice and, uh, and shiny, basically. Okay. Very quick, very, very quick. Really quick, really quick and really easy to use as well. You can see straight away, it's, uh, you can't even tell. That was a big burn there a minute ago. Look at the difference for the other side. Yeah, so that's what we started with. And that's what we get with really, really quick. So nice product to use as well. It's well balanced, uh, really comfortable. And that's, as, a, as an operator, that's really important to me. I'm just gonna turn the power off one second. Yeah, that's really important to me, the fact, the, the, the comfort because, any product on a, on a tool like an angle grinder is not so pleasant to use. So the, the more comfortable it is for you to use, the better. All right, so that's the, the crimped uh, bevel and the crimped wheel brushes. Now we're going to look at uh, more flat surfaces where we just want to strip off uh, a contaminant or a surface layer. Something like this here. Again, we're on carbon steel, uh, but it's had some uh, paint applied to this area. And all I want to do is I want to take off this paint, but I don't want to damage the surface. Yes, I could use a grinding disc, a flap disc, a fiber disc to take off this paint. But the problem with the grinding disc is going to damage the underlying material. Flap and fiber disc will also damage a little bit depending on the grade you choose, but a flap and fiber disc will get loaded with paint. All right. So they'll be full of this yellow paint and before long, they will actually stop, uh, stop working. But this is where the wire brush uh, really does uh, excel in compared to conventional. Yes, Paco. We have here just a one layer of paint, but you can imagine a, a, a bar has been painted many times in the year, maybe in, <laughs> yeah. the, in the 96 year or, or the former queen, it had been painted 96 uh, times uh, uh, a bar. Then you have 96 layers. Then to remove this layer of paint, the uh, wire brush is perfect. You will not load in the, the, the wire brushes. It's a good point, yeah. Because it's not often that they're, they're as nice and tidy as this, is it, back A lot of you say is it, when it's been in service a while, it's been painted a lot. So when it needs to come out and be repaired, there's a lot of layers of, of paint on there. Okay, so I've got the brush mounted. I'm going to use this one with the little skirt uh, that we were talking about for these little uh, protective flaps. So same applies. Uh, just use it again. Don't push. Just use the weight of the machine uh, no to take pressure. off this paint. <laughs> yes, yeah, all you all you need to do that. Uh, no need to change the speed of the grinder. Full speed is absolutely fine. These are all rated to run at over eleven thousand RPM. So there's no issue with uh, with speed rating on any of these uh, any of these products. Right. Let's see how fast we can get this uh, this paint away.
just in case we, we have the maximum RPM uh, right then on the on the cut brush, on all the brushes, you have the maximum RPM to work. You see very quickly, uh, no loading on the on the on the white brushes. Yeah, we'll show that Paco. Yeah, so we've taken off that bright yellow paint and let's have a look at the actual surface of the uh, of the brush. I'm just trying to get it in shot of the camera. Everything's stage left, stage right on here. It's not so easy, right? So there you go with the surface of the, the steel. There's no sign of the, the yellow painted surface we had there before. It's all nice and clean. And you can see inside the brush itself, absolutely no sign of, uh, of that yellow paint. So you can see on a, a conventional abrasive, it will be full of uh, yellow. But here with this product, you can go on stripping that off for forever. To be honest with you, it's really, uh, really long lasting product for that. So, so rust or, or contaminants or paint or whatever else you want to take off flat surfaces, the, uh, the cup brush is your, your friend for, for, for doing that, for doing larger areas. But the thing I, I quite like about it as well is the finish. We haven't really changed the, the surface finish at all. It's, uh, it's, it's quite homogenous compared to where, you know, where, where we didn't paint it before. So it doesn't look too different than what the steel would look like from, from the first place. So the finish is very uh, nice and uh, nice and bright. Yeah, you have, you have a large area to to clean. You, we we have a larger cut brushes. We have a cut brushes to work with right angle grinding or 180, or even 230 with a very yeah. large cut brushes that you you can work at very large areas very fast. Yeah, exactly. Again, it's a huge range. Okay, so that's uh, that's the cup uh, uh, crimp wire cut brushes. Really quick demo on that. Last of all, we're going to have a look at this uh, little beast. This is the crimp wire brush. Now we have got a, a bevel uh, brush today, so that can be used to go into uh, areas, uh, difficult areas like we showed earlier with the crimp wire be bevel brush, but this will be much more aggressive. So I can use this for lots of different applications, surface stripping, uh, of, of rust, of paint, of any kind of, uh, contaminant even weld spatter i could take that off with this product because it's uh, it's that much more aggressive due to the the thickness of of the wires and the density of the wires there's a lot of material here uh it's, it's much heavier than the other brushes and uh yeah, yeah, yeah we, we have different thickness of, of wire for for the crimp of the wire we have used it before is 0.3 millimeters this one is 0.5 millimeter the wire each wire yeah. is even thicker uh, and it is very good at, at Paul say for 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 welding. For instance, you want to to re weld uh, an area, you 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 want to remove a little bit of the old welding uh, line. And you can do with the, with this, and then after that you can re weld the, the the part. Yeah. Or add a new layer of welding. In some some cases. And again, I think with these products, I think it, we've done a really good job with these and uh, about the comfort. Um, I notice with uh, a lot of a lot of brushes, a lot of the cheaper brushes I see on the market, when we get to brushes to do more aggressive jobs like this twist knot, these knots can actually move inside the the metal clamps uh, where we clamp the, these these segments in here, and that causes some real imbalance with the product. And it feels absolutely awful to use, and I see that very commonly in the market. People buy the cheapest product they can and it's very poor. All these segments move, create an imbalance, creating a very horrible feeling when you, you have that, especially on these heavier ones. Yeah, yeah. you're right. And also, and also the quality of, of the steel. This is a very high temp yeah. high quality tempered steel. They are steel that are not really tempered and they are low quality steel that, of course, uh, they, they still open and, and, go, and go through and go away. And it makes it it makes it break more often as well uh, and that's for me as an operator i don't want because that means it's, that broken wire is going to go somewhere mainly in me so uh so yeah uh, it quality is uh, is important right i'm just going to use this again more aggressive i'm just going to take off this very heavily uh rusted component we've got here it's quite a thick layer of rust on this steel bar uh, if I use the crimp wire, it would take some wire, uh, some time to get through this. But we'll show you with uh, with the twist knot uh, heavier duty product, we can skin it off really, really, really quickly. Right, let's have a go. Really fast. You, you, in this case, you can see chips uh, and spark. The cheaper spark are the the rust, the rust uh, chips, not the not the base material.
And again, you can see here, we've taken off all the rust, but we really have left the pattern of the base material, as you, as you say in Francisco. It's, a, it's perfectly as it was when it came out of the factory in the first place. It's really not removing any of the underlying structures. So it's keeping the full strength of the base material, not changing geometry, but able to take off this, uh, this old, uh, old rust. One more thing I'm going to show very quickly uh, with a wire brush is taking off some scale. Now, scale is one of the harder types of uh, coatings that steel comes with naturally when it comes from the factory. Uh, it's one of the hardest things to take off uh, from the surface of a steel. And again, a lot of people use a flap fibre disc, a rapid strip product from our non-woven range, but they all do change the geometry or change the surface structure of the steel. If you just want to get rid of this black coating, wire brushes is absolutely perfect for you. You can see I've had a go already here. That's clear. So in this area here, I'll show you how quick we can do this without affecting the material. Right. Yeah. How quickly? You see the, the, the spire, we are scaling a little bit of material and we leave the surface homogeneous at the same level. Yeah, very nice. Very good work. There we go. Job done. Oh, hold on. Sorry, Martin's trying to chase me around with the, uh, the camera as normal and I'm trying to follow him, so it's always fun. So you can see a bit of the old carbon or the old um, uh, scale layer uh, here, uh, but you, in the middle here, I've used the wire brush completely clean. Just what we want. And again, if you're welding, uh, that's exactly what you want to do. We're trying to weld through carbon, uh, the scale carbon there. It is possible, but you'll get a very dirty weld and not a very good uh, uh, penetration of the weld too. So you clean it up with a carbide burr. You don't change carbide burr. That's, that's the stream in a month's time. Sorry about that. With a wire brush, it's also one of your products though, Paco, so that's not so bad, eh? <laughs> if you clean it up with a wire brush, uh, it makes a really good quick, quick job before you get on there and, uh, and, and, uh, and weld away. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's uh, that's everything for today. I know it's a quick whirl through uh, the world of uh, of wire brushes, but it just shows you we uh, we've got a lot of solutions here at, uh, at Norton for what you want to do. And if you are trying to clean or uh, take off paint or rust, we've got a huge selection of uh, of products to that you can you can have a look at. And you can even order yourself uh, one of these kits, which are quite nice with a lot of versatile products as you've seen here, and these all important. Uh, nice free uh, arm uh, arm protectors as well which i really really do like um okay so uh for those that you are watching uh, this uh, live stream on uh, on youtube um uh, we have to say goodbye to you now so uh, see you next time on uh, on norton stream so if you've not if you've missed ones before have a look at our youtube channel they're all back uh, for you to watch at your or your leisure but we'll see you next time on norton live <laughs>